series on differential equations for undergraduate students. Today's topic is higher order linear differential equations, but before going to the today's topic, we will first do the example for the last lecture which we had left in the last lecture. Just recall what we have done in the last lecture, the damp force oscillation or vibration. Here we were having that the system of mass spring system where the damping was present and the vibration or the oscillation was governed by a force. That was that the differential equation which we were dealing with the second order differential equation and for this system the governing equation was m y double dash plus c y dash plus k y is equal to f naught times cos omega t. Do you remember that we have taken this force as an example that is we are talking about this kind of force where the force is f naught cos omega t that is the deriving force and we want the systems response corresponding to this force. This is a non-homogeneous equation. So, associated homogeneous equation would be m y double dash plus c y dash plus k y is equal to 0. The solution of this non-homogeneous system we do know is the general solution is of the form y h plus y p, where y h is the general solution of this corresponding homogeneous equation and y p is the particular solution of this non-homogeneous equation. This general solution is called the transient solution and this particular solution y p, this is called the steady state solution. So, we are saying is that this steady state, what the term steady state means is that is it would remain as such and this term is also saying is the vibration or oscillation would go on. So, let us see all these things with the help of the example. So, do the example. We do have a body of mass 4 kg is hanging on the spring with spring constant as 3 Newton. A damper is attached to the system that will exert a force of 8 Newton when velocity is 1 meter per second. Further, an external force of 425 sin 2 t is attached to the body. If initially the body is displaced by 16 meter downwards and, and given that this initial velocity at that time is 26 meter per second downwards, then we have to find the equilibrium position and find the displacement at any time t. So, this question is basically of a mass spring system where this we are having is a spring and which is attached with a mass and a damper. There is one external force is also there and initially it has been displaced by 16 meters downwards and that has generated a velocity of 26 meter per second downwards. So, let us see is that is what the system is. We are having this is spring which has a spring constant as 3. There is a mass of 4 kg which is attached to with this one. Moreover, a damper is also attached with this one. What this damper is doing? This is changing the motion that is it is exerting a force of 8 Newton when the velocity is 1 meter per second. We have to develop the equation differential equation for this system and moreover in this system there is an external force is also governing this mass that is external force of 425 sin 2 t this force is upwards. So, we do have that what will be the solution because differential equation we are having is that damping is also there and the spring constant is also there. So, the equation would be m y double dash plus c y dash plus k y is equal to r t since an external force is also there. Now, what we are being given? We are given that this external force or this input is 425 sin 2 t that is r t is 425 sin 2 t. Then we are being given this constant k spring constant that is 3. Now, what is this damping constant c? We are being given that the damping force is 8 Newton when the velocity that is y dash is 1 meter per second that is we do have c y dash as 8. So, at y dash as 1 which gives me that the damping constant c to be 8 and moreover this mass we are being given is as 4 kg. So, what will be our equation? Now, our equation would be 4 y double dash plus 8 y dash plus 3 y is equal to 425 sin 2 t. Now, we have got 
the governing equation for this given system. What we have to find it out here this y is actually the displacement at any time t. So, we have to find out the displacement at any time t that is the solution of this equation which is y. Moreover, we have to find out when this system reaches to the equilibrium that is when it is reaching to the equilibrium position that is just giving the response to the initial force that is this force. So, let us see that is how we are going to solve. So, we are going to solve this differential equation. Now, this is a second order linear differential equation with the constant coefficients and the right hand side is not 0 that is it is non homogeneous. We do know that for solving this equation we require first to solve the associated homogeneous equation. What will be associated homogeneous equation that is the right hand side is 0 the equation is same 4 y double dash plus 8 y dash plus 3 y is equal to 0. Now, for solving this homogeneous equation we do know we require the characteristic equation of this one. What will be the characteristic equation? From here it should be 4 lambda square plus 8 lambda plus 3 is equal to 0. For finding the roots of this equation we will first factorize it. So, factorization gives me 2 lambda plus 1 into 2 lambda plus 3. Now, equate it to 0 we will get the two roots one is minus half and another is minus 3 by 2 from here. So, we are getting two real roots which are distinct. So, what will be the linear independent solutions two linear independent solution corresponding to these two roots as we do know they should be e to the power minus t by 2 and e to the power minus 3 by 2. So, the general solution for this homogeneous equation would be c 1 e to the power minus t by 2 plus c 2 e to the power minus 3 t by 2. Now, for finding out the particular solution for this non homogeneous one since we have this linear differential equation with the constant coefficient and this right hand side is of a special form we can use the method of undetermined coefficient. So, based on this kind of thing we just go to the table which says is that if my right hand side is of the form k sin omega x then I should choose my y p as a sin omega x plus b cos omega x. So, let us move to the solution. We do have this right hand side as 425 sin 2 t. So, according to the table my r t is since 425 sin 2 t. So, I should choose y p as a cos 2 t plus b sin 2 t. Now, here this a and b are the constant which we have to determine for this but this equation which gives that is so that this y p becomes a particular solution of this equation. For this what I have to do? I have to find out y p dash and y p double dash and substitute it over in this equation. So, y p dash would be minus 2 a sin 2 t plus 2 b cos 2 t what will be y p double dash again differentiate minus 4 a cos 2 t minus 4 b sin 2 t. Now, substitute this y p y p dash and y p double dash in this given equation. So, this substitution will give me after all this uh, 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 clarification we get it that is 16 b minus 13 a cos 2 t minus 16 a plus 13 b sin 2 t is equal to 425 sin 2 t. Now, to find out this a and b we will equate the coefficient of cos 2 t and sin 2 t on both the sides. So, on the left side we see the coefficient of cos 2 t is 16 b minus 13 a on the right hand side there is no term involving cos 2 t that is the coefficient is 0. So, we get the first equation as 16 b minus 13 a plus uh, is equal to 0. Now, the coefficient of sin 2 t on the left side is minus of 16 a plus 13 b on the right side is 425. So, we get the second equation as 16 a plus 13 b is equal to minus 425. Now, we are getting two equations in two unknowns these are simple algebraic equations we can get the unique solution and that solution is actually a as minus 16 and b as minus 13. So, what will be our particular solution? Y p would be minus 16 cos 2 t minus 13 sin 2 t. So, what will be the general solution for this non homogeneous equation? That would be as y h plus y p. Now, y h we do remember that it we have got c 1 e to the power minus t by 2 plus c 2 e to the power minus 3 t by 2 and plus this y p that is minus 16 cos 2 t 
minus 13 sin 2 t. So, this is the general solution of this non homogeneous system. Now, we are being given the conditions initial ones that the system has been put to the movement by displacing initially the object by 16 meter downwards and have generating a velocity of 26 meter per second downwards. So, we have to get the particular solution for that the initial conditions y 0 is 16 because it is downwards. So, the sin is plus similarly the velocity that is y dash at 0 that is 26 meter per second downwards that is again the sin is plus. So, we have got y 0 at 16 and y dash at 0 as 26. Now, what was our general solution? Our general solution was this one. So, we find out first what will be y dash t y dash t would be minus half c 1 e to the power minus t by 2 minus 3 by 2 c 2 e to the power minus 3 by 2 plus 32 sin 2 t minus 26 cos 2 t. Now, initial condition means that is y at 0 when I put t is equal to 0 here I will get c 1 here I will get c 2 and here I will get minus 16 this part would be 0. So, we would get y at 0 is c 1 plus c 2 minus 16 this is given as equal to 16. So, the first equation we have got c 1 plus c 2 is equal to 32. Now, second initial condition is about y dash at 0. So, when I put t is equal to 0 in this y dash t what I will get minus half c 1 minus 3 by 2 c 2 this term would be 0 and minus 26 that is minus half c 1 minus 3 by 2 c 2 minus 26 this is given to be equal to 26. So, we will get the second equation as c 1 plus 3 c 2 is equal to minus 104. Now, we have got two equations in two unknown we will solve it and we get from here that c 1 as 100 and c 2 as minus 68. So, what is our particular solution for the given system that is y t is equal to 100 e to the power minus t by 2 minus 68 e to the power minus 3 t by 2 minus 16 cos 2 t minus 13 sin 2 t. Now, we are being asked two questions. The question one was that is what is the when it reaches to equilibrium position and second was that is what is the displacement at any time t. Displacement at any time t that is y t. So, we are getting is that by this function we are giving the displacement at any time t. Now, when it is reaching to the steady state solution that is the equilibrium, equilibrium means is it is reaching to the steady state solution, this solution and this part is 0. Let us see these things by the graphs. So, we see that this graphs we do have this red line is actually the general solution that is 100 e to the power minus t by 2 minus 68 e to the power minus 3 t by 2 minus 16 cos 2 t minus 13 2 t. And while this green line this representing the particular solution that we had obtained as y h plus y p that is minus 16 cos 2 t minus 13 sin 2 t. Now, we see this solution that is solution of this problem we do have that initially it is displaced by 16 meter downwards that is the positive side. It is generating a velocity of 26 meter per second that is the slope here is 26 meter uh, r 26 with positive direction. So, this movement is that is the displacement is on the positive side more higher then it is coming down but because it is a spring it is coming down to something is near 0 or other going little bit negative then it is again going up and then coming down and so on it goes on. We see after some time this red line and this green line they are matching ones. This we called if you do remember the general solution as the transient solution and this y p that is a particular solution as the steady state solution. So, this is the graph where we are saying is that this is the displacement or this will be the motion of that system which after some times you are seeing is that it is matching towards the green line. If you see is that is exactly it is started matching after this at uh, say 10 seconds after this 10 seconds is exactly matching with the green and uh, red that is we are not able to see finally, that is where is the green and where is the red. 
So, we find out that is after that the system has stabilized. Now, the movement is not because of that initial pull or initial velocity. Now, it is only the response of the function deriving force that is 425 sin 2 t. So, we are reaching to the steady state solution after say 10 seconds. So, this is what the solution of uh, you could say the displacement at any time t that is being given by this red graph. When it is reaching to the steady state solution or a solution or equilibrium that is at 10 seconds after 10 seconds it is reaching. So, this is what we had concluded with this vibration one that is it will move on like this, this oscillation will go on that is that is why we are calling it vibration it is going with equal ones and like that one it will go on because of that input deriving force 425 sin 2 t. Now, we will move to towards today's topic that is higher order linear differential equations. Now, we will move on from the second order to any arbitrary order n equation. So, what will be a differential equation of any order n that should be a function of x y y dash y n is equal to 0, where this y n we are saying is representing the nth derivative of y with respect to x. This equation would be called linear if this is of the form y n plus p n minus 1 x y to the power n y sorry n th derivative n minus 1 th derivative of y y n minus 1 plus plus and so on p 1 x y dash plus p naught x y is equal to r x. This is equation is of order n. We see the highest derivative which is occurring in this equation that is of nth order. So, the order of this equation is n. The coefficients of y n, y n minus 1, y dash, y all these are functions of x only that is p naught x, p 1 x, p n minus 1 x and r x all these are the function of x only. So, we this equation is linear since none of the terms y or y dash or its derivatives are coming in the same term simultaneously. So, it is a linear one. Now, if this right hand side is identically 0, the equation will be of the form y n plus p n minus 1 x y n minus 1 plus so on p 1 x y dash plus p naught x y is equal to 0. This would be called then homogeneous linear equation of order n. When this is not 0, then we call it non-homogeneous linear equation of order n. This we are calling as a standard form since the coefficient of y to the power n sorry the coefficient of the nth derivative y n is 1. This could be any p n x, but that to make it as of order n we require that p n x must not be 0 function. So, we do can have this p n x as 1. So, this we are calling a standard form. Now, let us to revisit some definitions in the differential equation. So, first is solution. What will be the solution of any third or differential equation? As usual, we have done that the solution should be any function which is satisfying the equation. So, what is special about this one? A solution of any third or differential equation on some open interval i is the function y x, which is differentiable n times on i and the function and its derivative satisfy the equation. So, the function and its derivative satisfy the equation that uh, fulfill the condition of solution. What I require that this function would be solution only if it is n times differentiable. So, that is the difference between the whatever the definitions we have done earlier. Now, we will concentrate first on the homogeneous equations. We have seen in the second order homogeneous equations that we have got one fundamental theorem which said is that is linear combination of solution is also the solution. Similarly, here also we do have superposition principle or the linearity principle. What this says? This says for homogeneous linear differential equation y n plus p n minus 1 x y n minus 1 and so on plus p 1 x y dash plus p naught x y is equal to 0 the sum and the constant multiples of the solutions on some open interval i are again the solution of this equation. In other words, the linear combination of the solution of the homogeneous linear equation are also solution of the 
same equation. That is, if suppose I do have y 1 and y 2 as the two solution for this homogeneous linear equation. Then c 1 y 1 plus c 2 y 2 will again be a solution of this homogeneous linear equation of order n. Let us just see some more terms over here that basis general solution and particular solution. First the general solution. For in a third linear differential equation which is homogeneous of this form that is standard form y n plus p n minus 1 x y n minus 1 plus so on plus p 1 x y dash plus p naught x y is equal to 0. The general solution will be of the form <coughs> c 1 y 1 plus c 2 y 2 plus plus c n y n where this y 1 y 2 y n they are linearly independent solution of this equation and the c 1 c 2 c n are the arbitrary constants. Now, these linearly independent solutions of this equation <coughs> they are called basis or fundamental system of solutions. Moreover, what we do have here is since this is in a third equation this will actually have n linearly independent solutions and those n linearly independent solutions will form the basis or the fundamental system of the solution. And the general solution of this equation will consist of the linear combination of the all these linearly independent solutions where the c 1, c 2, c n would be arbitrary constants and this general solution will include all the solutions. Moreover, a particular solution would be what? When I do give the specific values to this constant c 1, c 2, c n that solution would be called a particular solution that can be obtained by given certain conditions. We say that it is satisfying certain conditions. So, that I could find out the values of this c 1, c 2, c n. Now, let us do some examples to understand the concepts just now we had learned. Of course, we have done it in the second order and the first order, but we will again redo for the nth order just generalize it. First example is the function x 3 x x square are linearly dependent on interval n. That is first we are trying to understand the linear dependence and independence. We have already done the linear dependence and independence in the terms of two solutions. Now, we are moving to the higher one. So, first thing is that is what we would call linear dependence or independence. C 1 y 1 plus C 2 y 2 plus C n y n this is called a linear combination where y 1, y 2, y n are the functions and the c 1, c 2, c n are constant. This is called a linear combination. Now, if this linear combination is identically equal to 0 for some constants c 1, c 2, c n where all this c 1, c 2, c n are not 0 that is for some non-zero constants, then we call that y 1, y 2, y n are linearly dependent. So, what we have learned that from linear combination if it is identically 0 for some non-zero constant then the functions y 1, y 2, y n would be linearly dependent. Now, in this question what has been asked that is show that they are linearly dependent on any interval. Let us choose here c 1 as 3, c 2 as uh, minus 1 and c 3 as 0. So, now I have chosen two constants which are non-zero and one-zero constants. Since there are three functions, I have chosen this three constants. Now, let us see what would be c 1 y 1 plus c 2 y 2 plus c 3 y 3. This would be actually 3 times x minus 3 times x which is equal to 0 for all x. Whatever be the interval i that says is that linear combination is 0 with non-zero constants. The non-zero constants we had 3 and minus 1. Thus, what we conclude that y 1, y 2, y 3 are linearly dependent. Now, let us revisit the definition of independence also as we said is that is in general solution we require n linearly independent solution. So, what we would call linear independence. So, for the n functions again we will use with the linear combination. The n functions y 1, y 2, y n are linearly independent if there does not exist any non-zero constant such that the linear combination c 1 y 1 plus c 2 y 2 plus c n y n is 0. That says is that 
this linear combination would be 0 if and only if this t 1 c 2 c n are all 0 that is in other words we say the linear combination is 0 if and only if all c 1 c 2 c n are 0 then we call that y 1 y 2 y n are linearly independent. We had also learned this linear dependence and independence if you do remember in uh, second order equation using something called the Ransky determinant or Ranskian that is again we can see that Ranskian in the form of n functions or n solutions. So, let us do the definition of dependence and independence in the form of Ranskian. What will be the Ranskian of n functions that we define as for n functions y 1, y 2, y n the Ranskian w y 1, y 2, y n is being defined as the determinant where the first row is containing all the functions y 1, y 2 and y n. The second row will contain the derivative of y 1 dash that is y 2 dash and y n dash and so on. The nth row will contain the n minus first derivative of the function y 1, y 2, y n. The, so, the Ranskian for the n function would be a determinant of order n containing these functions and their derivatives. We would say that when the functions will be linearly dependent and independent, if this Ranskian that is this determinant is not 0 for any x, we call that y 1, y 2, y n are linearly independent. If this determinant is 0 for some x, we call that their functions are linearly dependent. So, now let us just use this definition in our own examples. We had the example that we had the functions x 3 x and x square. What is the Ranskian of these functions? Of course, that should be first row will contain the functions x 3 x x square, second row the first derivative, its derivative is 1, its derivative is 3 and its derivative is 2 x. Now, the second row, the second derivative of the function are the again the derivative of the last row. So, the derivative of 1 is 0, 3 is 0 and 2 x is 2. Now, if I find out the value of this determinant, I would just like to expand it with respect to the third row. So, with respect to this 2, we would be getting is the determinant of order second x and 3 x and 1 and 3. So, what we will get 3 x minus 3 x that is 2 times 3 x minus 3 x which is 0 for all x that again gives me that is my Ranskian has come out to be 0 for all x. So, y 1, y 2, y 3 they are linearly dependent. Now, let us do one more um, example to learn the about the solution. Find the solution of y 4 minus 5 y dash plus 4 y is equal to 0. y 4 means the fourth derivative of the function y. Now, we see this is a linear differential equation where the coefficients are 4, 5 and 1 that is they are constants. Now, we will just try with the similar conditions which we have done in the first order and second order when we had the constant coefficients we tried with the solutions of the kind e to the power lambda x. So, here again we will move to that form of solution that is let us say e to the power lambda x is a solution. If this is a solution then this function and its derivatives y dash y double dash and so on they must satisfy this equation. So, let us try what will be y dash lambda times e to the power lambda x y double dash lambda square times e to the power lambda x the third derivative lambda cube times e to the power lambda x and the fourth derivative would be lambda to the power 4 e to the power lambda x. Now, I substitute if this is a solution I will substitute this and will try to satisfy the equation. So, if I am substituting in this equation I would get lambda to the power 4 e to the power lambda x minus 5 lambda square e to the power lambda x plus 4 e to the power lambda x is equal to 0. Now, rewriting it we get lambda to the power 4 minus 5 lambda square plus 4 into e to the power lambda x is equal to 0. Now, if e to the power this y is a solution this must be true this will be true only if either e to the power lambda x is 0 or this coefficient that lambda to the power 4 minus 5 lambda square plus 4 is 0. Now, this e to the power lambda x this cannot be 0 because we are taking this as a solution. So, it should not be 
a trivial solution that it should not be 0 for all x that says is that my lambda to the power 4 minus 5 lambda square plus 4 should be 0. This if you do see is that is this similar to that what we are getting is characteristic equation in second order. So, this also we call the characteristic equation. Now, this is a fourth order one let us factorize this equation. What this factorization would give me? Lambda to the power 4 minus 4 lambda square minus lambda square plus 4. Now, you see if I take common from here lambda square and here from minus 1 we would get lambda square into lambda square minus 4 minus lambda square minus 4 is equal to 0 which gives me lambda square minus 1 into lambda square minus 4 is equal to 0. That says is further factorization lambda minus 1 into lambda plus 1 lambda minus 2 into lambda plus 2 is equal to 0. So, we have got the roots of this equation as 1 minus 1 2 and minus 2. So, the roots are 1 minus 1 2 and minus 2. Now, what we have seen? We have got the fourth order equation. The characteristic equation was of the um, order 4. So, we got the degree 4. So, we have got the 4 roots. Now, all these roots are now we are seeing is they are distinct and real. So, let us say that is we will get the four solutions say the solutions we would say corresponding to the 1 e to the power x corresponding to the minus 1 e to the power minus x corresponding to 2 e to the power 2 x and corresponding to the minus 2 e to the power minus 2 x. Now, the solutions will form a basis only if they are linearly independent. So, for checking linear independence let us use the Ranskian. So, Ranskian we are having that is it is the 4 uh, solution. So, we will have the determinant of order 4, where the first row of course, as usual we would have all the solutions e to the power x, e to the power minus x, e to the power 2 x, e to the power minus 2 x. Second row the derivatives, so e to the power x minus e to the power minus x, here 2 times e to the power 2 x, this one would be minus 2 times e to the power minus 2 x. Third row again the second derivative or the derivative of the previous row, so like this one and the last row would be the derivative of the previous row. So, again we are having e to the power x minus e to the power minus x 8 times e to the power 2 x and minus 8 times e to the power minus 2 x. Now, to solve this determinant we can take common from the first column e to the power x from the second column we will get e to the power minus x, the third column we would get e to the power 2 x and the fourth column we would get e to the power minus 2 x. So, this multiplication of all these we would get as 1 and what will be remaining here is in the first column 1, second column 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1, the third column we will get 1, 2, 4, 8 and in the fourth column we will get 1 minus 2, 4 minus 8. Now, if we just solve this determinant we will get the value of this as 144 which is not 0. That says is that all my these solutions which we had formed out they are linearly independent. So, what will be the basis for the system that is uh, basis are the fundamental system for of this solutions that would be y 1 is e to the power x, y 2 as e to the power minus x, y 3 as e to the power 2 x and y 4 as e to the power minus 2 x. So, the general solution for the given differential equation would be c 1 e to the power x plus c 2 e to the power minus x plus c 3 e to the power 2 x plus c 4 e to the power minus 2 x. So, we have got the general solution for this differential equations. Now, we will move to the next term initial value problem. What is the initial value problem? The initial value problem will contain the differential equation that is nth order differential equation homogeneous one and n initial condition. Since this is nth order differential equation we will have now n initial condition. We had seen the first order equation we had got only single initial condition. In the second order equation we have got two initial conditions. Now, we will have n initial condition. What are those n initial conditions? They would be y at some point x naught is k naught, y dash at some point x naught is k 1 and so on. The n minus 1 is derivative at x naught is k n minus 1. So, this would be called initial value problem. They would give me the actually the particular values for the constant c 1, c 2, c n that is arbitrary constant in the general solution. Now, existence and uniqueness theorem for initial value problem. What we say is that if p naught x, p 1 x and p n minus 
1 x are continuous functions on some open interval i and x naught belongs to i, then the initial value problem which is containing this in a third equation y n p n minus 1 x y n minus 1 plus p 1 x y dash plus p dot x y is equal to 0 and n initial conditions y at x naught is equal to k naught y dash at x naught is equal to k 1 and y n minus 1 x at x naught is k n minus 1. This will have a unique solution on the interval i. That is I would get a single values the unique values for c 1 c 2 c n in the general solution. Existence of general solution. Result says if the coefficients p naught x p 1 x and p n minus 1 x in this linear differential equation which is homogeneous y n p n minus 1 x y n minus 1 and so on, they are continuous on some interval i. Then every solution y x of this equation will be of the form c 1 y 1 plus c 2 y 2 plus c n y n where this y 1 y 2 y n are the basis of the solutions and c 1 c 2 c n are arbitrary constants. That is this nth order equation will contain or will have n linearly independent solutions and the general solution would be a linear combination of those linearly independent solutions. Moreover, all the solution of this equation would be included in the general solution that is there would be no singular solution for this differential equation of linear differential equation of order n which is homogeneous. So, let us come first with the higher order homogeneous linear equation with constant coefficients. What in a third order homogeneous linear equation which is of the form y n plus a n minus 1 y to the power y n minus 1 plus so on a 1 y dash plus a naught y is equal to 0, where these coefficients a n minus 1, a n minus 2, a 1, a naught they are all constants. So, now they are not the function of x, they are just the constants then we call this in a third order homogeneous linear equation with constant coefficients. Now, we do have done the solution of these kind of equations in the first order and second order. There we had used the function of the form e to the power lambda x as the solution. So, here also we will find out the method to solve this equation. We will use again this kind of function as a solution. That says is that we are having y dash as lambda to the times e to the power lambda x, y double dash as lambda square e to the power lambda x and so on. The nth derivative would be lambda to the power n times e to the power lambda x. If this function is a solution of this one, then we would get that this function and these derivatives must satisfy this equation. So, if I substitute this here in this equation, we would get lambda n e to the power lambda x plus a n minus 1 times lambda to the power n minus 1 into e to the power lambda x and so on a naught e to the power lambda x is equal to 0. Rewriting this I would get one equation as lambda n to the power n plus a n minus 1 times lambda to the power n minus 1 and so on plus a 1 lambda plus a naught into e to the power lambda x is equal to 0. Since we have started that e to the power lambda x is a solution, so it cannot be 0. So, if e to the power lambda x is a solution that must satisfy this equation and this equation will be satisfied if either this part is 0 or this part is 0 this part cannot be 0. So, we will get that this part is 0 which we are calling the characteristic equation. So, the characteristic equation we are getting lambda to the power n plus a n minus 1 lambda to the power n minus 1 and so on plus a 1 lambda plus a naught is equal to 0. Now, we see this is equation of degree n till now we have done the second order equation where we have got the characteristic equation as having say a quadratic equation. Just now we had finished one example where we had used a fourth order equation and the characteristic equation we have got of degree 4 and that equation was having 4 roots. So, this equation will have n roots that says is now if you do remember in the second order equation we have got the three cases that is they are real roots, double roots and then complex roots. Now, since they are n roots, so we will have many more cases. What will be those kind of roots? Let us see. 
they would be either real roots or the complex roots. Then the real roots also could be either simple roots that is they are not repeated one or the multiple roots that is they are repeated one. Similarly, in the complex roots also we can have the simple roots that would be the a conjugate pair or that conjugate pair is being repeated many times that is the multiple roots. That is in all we have got four cases simple real roots, simple complex roots, multiple real roots and multiple complex roots. Let us see one by one all these four cases and what will be n linearly independent solutions in all these four cases. So, the case 1 simple real roots that says if the characteristic equation lambda n plus a n minus 1 lambda to the power n minus 1 and so on plus a 1 lambda plus a naught is equal to 0, this is having n roots lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda n, they are all real and distinct. Then we would say n linearly independent solution should be e to the power lambda 1 x, e to the power lambda 2 x and so on e to the power lambda n x. These solutions would be linearly independent. If they are linearly independent, then we will get the general solution as <coughs> c 1 e to the power lambda 1 x plus c 2 e to the power lambda 2 x plus c n e to the power lambda n x. Now, we said is if they are linearly independent. Now, let us just check whether they are linearly independent or not. We will again use the Ranskian. So, Ranskian for this would be in a third determinant where the first row will contain all the solutions e to the power lambda 1 x, e to the power lambda 2 x and so on e to the power lambda n x. Second row will have the first derivative and so on. The nth row will have n minus 1 th derivative of these functions. So, now if I again <coughs> go to solve this determinant, we will find it out that from the first column I can take common e to the power lambda 1 x, second column e to the power lambda 2 x and so on the last column e to the power lambda n x that e to the power lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus lambda n plus uh, lambda n x and the determinant we will get 1, 1, 1 the first row, second row lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n, the third row lambda 1 square, lambda 2 square, lambda n square and so on the last row we would have lambda 1 to the power n minus 1, lambda to the power n minus 1 and so on lambda n to the power n minus 1. This is a special kind of determinant, this is not 0. We can check it by our just that is by doing all those row operations and column operations for finding it out. Actually the value of this determinant is turns out to be all this uh, term uh, e to the power lambda 1 plus lambda 2 and so on here minus 1 to the power n into n plus n minus 1 by 2 into v, where v is actually the product of lambda i minus lambda j for all i less than j. Now, since we are having this all my roots lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n are distinct that is lambda i minus lambda j will not be 0 for all i less than j, when i is not equal to j they will not be 0 that says is this product of non-zero real numbers this will never be 0 and that gives that this determinant will not be 0. So, Ranskin is not 0 that says my solutions e to the power lambda 1 x e to the power lambda 2 x they are linearly independent. Now, let us come to the second case that is simple complex root. We do know that is whenever the complex roots are occurring they would occur in the pair. So, if my characteristic equation does has a complex root, they will always occur in conjugate pair. That is, if the one root is of the form alpha plus i beta, I must have the second root of the form alpha minus i beta. Now, suppose this is simple that is it is occurring only once. So, corresponding to this lambda 1 and lambda 2, these two roots will have two linearly independent solutions as e to the power alpha x cos beta x and e to the power alpha x sin beta x. They are linearly independent of each other. Moreover, if I am having all other roots, they are simple real roots or they are different simple complex roots, they will also be linearly independent to them. These things we will learn in the examples. Now, come to the case 3 that is multiple real roots. What it says? If my characteristic equation lambda to the power n plus a n minus 1, lambda to the power n minus 1 and so on plus a 1 lambda plus a naught is equal to 0. This has some, this has real roots, all the roots are real, 
but all the roots are not distinct. Say some root lambda star is repeated k times. That is, I do have some things lambda lambda minus lambda star to the power k that we are calling multiplicity k. Then one solution would be of course, e to the power lambda star, but what will be about the other solution? So, we require actually k linearly independent solution. Those k linearly independent solution with respect to this lambda star would be actually this. You see, first solution of course, as e to the power lambda star x. Then the second solution will have x times e to the power lambda star x and so on. The kth solution we will have x to the power k minus 1 e to the power lambda star x. How we had obtained? If you do remember, we have done the double real root in the case of second order equation and there the second solution we had obtained by the method of variation of parameter or that uh, by substituting the solution. So, with the same method we are finding out these k linearly independent solution with respect to this root lambda star which is been repeated k times. Now, let us come to this when this we do have case 4 multiple complex roots. Multiple complex roots that means, it is not only the single root the complete pair would have been repeated. So, if this characteristic equation does has a complex conjugate pair that is alpha plus i beta and alpha minus i beta and this is been repeated k times that is this complete pair is having multiplicity k that says now we require 2 k linearly independent solution. So, what will be those 2 k linearly independent solution? Let us see that is how we are obtaining this 2 k linearly independent solution. One we will obtain with respect to if you do remember if they would have been simple one we would have e to the power alpha x into cos beta and e to the power alpha x sin beta. So, we will have first e to the power alpha x cos beta that is the one solution. The other solution with the multiplicity k that is k we would have x times e to the power alpha x cos beta x and so on x to the power k minus 1 e to the power alpha x cos beta x. Similarly, the k plus first solution we will go with this e to the power alpha x sin beta x and again we will have the k solution that is k plus 2 as x times e to the power alpha x sin beta x and so on. 2 kth solution would be x to the power k minus 1 e to the power alpha x sin beta x. So, we are having the roots uh, that solutions 1 corresponding to the e to the power alpha x cos beta x there we would multiply x x square and so on till x k power k minus 1 and in the second solutions we do have is that is e to the power alpha x sin beta x then multiply x x square and so on till x to the power k minus 1 that is what we had learned. In each case, we will get n linearly independent solution whatever be the situation and those solutions let us say they are y 1, y 2, y n. So, the general solution will always be of the form c 1 y 1 plus c 2 y 2 plus c n y n. Now, let us do some example to understand these things. Let us do the first example. Solve y 4 minus 16 y is equal to 0 what is the solution? So, this is a linear differential equation of order 4 and it is homogeneous. So, first we would find out the characteristic equation. The characteristic equation if you do see we have got this lambda to the power n min plus a n minus 1 lambda to the power n minus 1 and so on. So, here what we will get lambda to the power 4 minus 16 is equal to 0. Now, factorize this one what we will get? lambda minus 2 lambda plus 2 into lambda square plus 4 is equal to 0. Thus, what we will get the roots? We will get the roots as 2 minus 2 and minus 2 i and plus 2 i. So, what we are getting actually we are getting 4 roots where the 2 roots are real and they are distinct the 2 roots are the complex conjugate. And in the complex con roots we are having is that the term alpha plus i beta and alpha minus i beta I am having is that alpha part is 0 and we are having the beta as 2. So, what will be corresponding for linearly independent solution with respect to this real roots we would have because they are distinct e to the power minus 2 x with 2 we would have e to the power 2 x. Now, with this complex conjugate ones we would have <coughs> cos 2 x and sin 2 x. Now, all these 4 roots are 
are these four solutions are linearly independent. I said is that is we have find out these two linearly independent, these two linearly independent, we had already claimed it. Now, we want to check that is all these four are linearly independent. Let us again move to the method of Ranskin that is first find out the Ranskin of this one. So, the general solution would be of course, if they are linearly independent, this would be of the form c 1 e to the power minus 2 x plus c 2 e to the power 2 x plus c 3 cos 2 x plus c 4 sin 2 x. Let us check about the linear independence. What will be the Ranskin? Because it is a 4 uh, uh, solution, so it will be of order 4 determinant, where the first row would have all the solutions e to the power minus 2 x, e to the power 2 x, cos 2 x and sin 2 x. Second row, we will have the derivatives. So, as usual the derivative, then the third row the derivative of the second row and the fourth row the derivative of the third row. So, we have got this determinant. Now, again we will take e to the power minus 2 x common from the first column, e to the power 2 x from the second column and from here we will get uh, cos 2 x and sin 2 x. So, what we are getting is that is it would be actually 124 times cos 2 x sin 2 x. This will be not exactly cos 2 x sin 2 x, this would be a function of this one. So, this will not be 0 for any x. That says is that we are getting the 4 linearly independent solutions. So, come to the second example. Solve the initial value problem y triple dash minus y double dash minus y dash plus y is equal to 0 with initial conditions y at 0 is 2, y dash at 0 is 1 and y double dash at 0 is 0. Now, so the equation is homogeneous linear differential equation of order 3 with the 3 initial conditions. So, for solving it we first get the characteristic equation as usual lambda cube minus lambda square minus lambda plus 1 is equal to 0. We see that with the factorization that it is nothing but lambda square if it I take common from here and here from minus 1, I would get lambda minus 1 and lambda minus 1. That is, we would get lambda square minus 1 into lambda minus 1, which is same as lambda minus 1 into lambda plus 1 and lambda minus 1. So, lambda minus 1 whole square into lambda plus 1. If I equate it to 0, I will get the 3 roots, where the root 1 is repeated 2 times, because I am having lambda minus 1 whole square and lambda plus 1. 1 give me the root minus 1. So, I get the roots minus 1, 1 and 1. So, I have one root which is repeated 2 times. What will be the 3 linearly independent solution? The solution corresponding to the first root would have e to the power minus x. With the second root, I would have e to the power x. Now, the third root is repeated one. So, we will go with the method that is we multiply x with this one and the third solution would be x times e to the power x these three are linearly independent solutions. So, the general solution will be of the form c 1 e to the power minus x plus c 2 e to the power x plus c 3 x times e to the power x. Again, we can check that these three are linearly independent with the help of Ranskian. So, Ranskian here would be e to the power minus x e to the power x x times e to the power x. So, if we take the derivatives and the second derivatives. Now, if I take the common e to the power minus x e to the power x and e to the power x, I would left with e to the power x and the determinant as of the form 1 1 x minus 1 1 x plus 1 and 1 1 x plus 2. If we solve it, we do get it is equal to 4 times e to the power x, which is not 0. That says is that these 3 solutions are linearly independent. Now, we have to solve the initial value problem that is we have to find out the particular solution. The given initial conditions are y at 0 is 2, y dash at 0 is 1 and y double dash at 0 is 0. Our general solution was c 1 e to the power minus x plus c 2 e to the power x plus c 3 x times e to the power x. What will be y dash? That would be minus c 1 e to the power minus x plus c 2 e to the power x plus c 3 x e to the power x plus c 3 e to the power x and double dash that is second derivative would be c 1 e to the power minus x plus c 2 e to the power x plus c 3 x times e to the power x plus 2 twice c 3 e to the power x that is 1 from c 3 e to the power x s here and here. Now, put the initial condition that is put y 
uh, x at 0 here. So, y at 0 I will get c 1 plus c 2 which is given is equal to 2. From the second one if I am putting x is equal to 0 this will give me minus c 1 plus c 2 plus c 3 this is equal to 1 this is given and the third condition gives me c 1 plus c 2 plus 2 c 3 is equal to 0 from here. So, I am getting 3 equations in 3 unknowns and we can solve it, we can get the unique solution that solution we are getting as 0, c 1 as 0, c 2 as 2 and c 3 as minus 1. So, what will be the solution of our initial value problem that will be 2 times e to the power x minus x times e to the power x that is c 1 is 0, c 2 is 2 and c 1 is minus 3. So, finally, what we are getting is 2 minus x times e to the power x. We can check that this is solution for the given differential equation. Moreover, this solution is satisfying all these initial conditions. So, this is the solution of initial value problem. So, today we had learned about higher order homogeneous linear equations with constant coefficients. We had learned how to solve them, we had learned certain definitions in the terms of higher order one and we had learned homogeneous one that is uh, higher or nth order linear differential equations with constant coefficients where the right hand side is 0. Thank you.